on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. And today we're joined with 2023 NCAA All American from NC State, Kyle Reaney. Kyle, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. And first off, congratulations to you getting yourself a spot on the podium this year. Awesome. It was awesome watching you wrestle. Um, not even just at nationals, but the whole season so far, man. So congrats uh, to you on that. Thank, thank you very much. So uh, when we first get into it, kind of want to know uh, where your where your career began, who got you into the sport, and just kind of talk a little bit about the the beginning of your career. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know I didn't really come from a wrestling family, but you know I still I sh- I've wrestled since I was in kindergarten. I think my dad just kind of got me into it as kind of like. A, start to my combat combat sports career but probably will be the, the end of it so um but yeah i just i just started as a little kid and i never really never really dropped it um eventually i found a way to kind of fall in love with the sport and it just kind of kept kept rolling find, finally found my, my myself in some high level competition and competing with high level guys and just kind of just really kept uh kept kept rolling with it i didn't take it too seriously until i started you know kind of come come up on high school so middle school to you know, end of, end of middle school is but whenever I really started to, you know, take wrestling a little bit more serious. And that was probably around the same time that I learned that, you know, that I actually, like, I really loved the sport and that I was going to put actual effort into it, so. Yeah, man, I mean, 100%. And this year for you, I think, was probably your breakout year com- with competition-wise. So talk a little bit about your high school career, you know, your four years in high school, and then how you ended up at NC State. Yeah, um, so I'm from Missouri. Uh, I wrestled uh, – for Sleckman High School back in, in Imperial, Missouri, and I was a three-time state champ, four-time placer. I got third my freshman year. Um, let's see. I as outside of it nationally, I, I won NHSCA nationals, um, but I all American and placed at most of the other big ones. So Fargo All American, Super Thirty Two All American, uh, Ironman, third at Ironman, and uh, whatever. Well, most mo- most of the big tournaments I went to, I was. What, Flow Nationals finalist, uh, and then a couple other tournaments here and there that I went to. But yeah, no, I, I would say I got around. I did. I had a pretty pretty solid resume for myself back in high school, and then it wasn't. But I wouldn't say that I was also, you know, I was always just outside of that being the you know number one, number two guy. So yeah, do you remember what your rank was when you came out of out of high school? The you had high- to be top ten at your weight for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, the highest I ever was, I think, was three. I think the highest I. Three and then on the big board, I think I will top fifty for sure. Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was though. No, you're I, all good, man. But it, it, it's awesome, man. You pretty much you you know just name dropping a little bit of the tournaments and stuff like that. You pretty much did everything a high schooler could do. You know, mm-hmm. you placed at all the huge tournaments and you multiple times state champ. And Missouri's on an up, man. You we're hearing a lot of guys coming out of Missouri and. Even the University of Missouri, they're they're doing super well out in Mizzou, and um, you know Mizzou, Mizzou's always been pretty solid. You know they kind of have up and down years, but they've definitely been solid. And yeah, like you said, it's kind of, uh, more and more you hear a lot of guys coming out of Missouri, and you know obviously we have one of our world team members, Jaden Cox, who is also from Missouri. So you know, sure. can't, can't, can't so so being a Missouri boy, what kind of made you want to leave Missouri and come to NC State? <laughs> being in Missouri, <laughs> being in Missouri. <laughs> Or maybe you want to leave Missouri. No, I just, I never had, I don't know. I never, I didn't grow up with money, so I never got to go a lot of places. And wrestling took me to places that I never would have really went to before. And it kind of just put the taste in my own mouth. Like, I want to see more. I want to get out more and spend some time away from, you know, Missouri. And even though it was my home, you know, it kind of felt like, you know, I felt like I was, you know, I'm now that I'm mobile and I'm able to go to all these different places, like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go somewhere new. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find somewhere you know, pretty far away, pretty far away from home. I kind of wanted to get closer to the beach anyways. And it was, uh, it was never really a decision that I regretted. And it was something, and it's still something now today that I'm like, you know, I think getting away from home and getting away from Missouri is one of the best, you know, decisions I think I've made because I found a pretty, a pretty special place here in, uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. So. Yeah, man, I I think you find yourself, you know, a home in, in North Carolina and I'm sure, uh, the weather ain't too bad out there, man. I'm sure you're loving it, man. And like you yeah. said, being close to the beach and stuff, I'm sure it's nice on some off days to go and just get the toes in the water a little bit and relax. Yeah, planning a couple of beach trips already, but uh, no, no, it's nice. Definitely still get your seasons out here, but, you know, you get a much longer summer. 
uh, quick spring, longer summer, you know, and the, uh, the winter and fall aren't, don't seem too long. So. Yeah, man. Awesome. Awesome, man. So how many did this year, man, what were some, what were some things you think you changed or kind of prepared a little bit more that you had this outbreak year and get yourself a spot on the podium? Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't say it was really doing more. I think it was doing, doing less and worrying about less, not, not necessarily doing less, but like I, a big like theme for me this year was to not like let the little things like weigh on me too much to like do all the little things right, but not let like little things, you know, affect me too much. So not, not stressing too much about a certain thing or taking like anything, like not making as like anything too big of a, like a bigger deal than it needs to be or anything like that. So minimizing, minimizing a lot of like the little stressors in my life and just things that, you know, would like try to annoy me or whatever. It's just, I was just more like, eh, doesn't matter. doesn't mean it doesn't, really doesn't, I don't care. Don't matter. So with that too, you know, I try, I kind of took an approach to competition where it was like, you know, what's, whatever's happened is going to happen. You know, I, I have confidence in my ability and like the preparation that I've put into it. But at the end of the day, you know, it's not the end of the world if I don't, you know, if I don't come out on top, if I don't win. So it's like, if I don't win, who really cares? Am I really going to care that much, you know, in 10 years, if I don't win this one match, if I don't, and then, and you know, for the rest of my life, am I really going to, am I really going to care about, losing one match or something like this here and there. So just to like, kind of not like invalidate everything that I was doing, but just, just kind of not everything's such a big deal. Like just to just kind of be calm and relaxed and, you know, pretty laid back about everything and going into the AWA tournament, I was really like, not that I was like super mellowed out, but like, I was like, I was relatively calm, way less like stressed out and freaked out and like nervous and like worrying about so many little things than I was like going into last year's tournament. And this year just helped me kind of, it helped me open up, it helped open up my wrestling. It helped, you know, make weight cuts a little bit easier just because it was like, oh, okay, I only have one, two, three more left. You know, I'm at lights at the end of the tunnel. I don't even have to do this anymore, really. So, and then just, and then finally, you know, I, I won my matches that put me on the podium. And then I was really like, then it really was like, oh man, I don't care what the hell happens. I made the podium. So, yeah, man. So, Talk a little bit about your support system, man. And we've heard a ton of people that we've been talking to, especially this year. You know, these the, we we may, we start making these videos usually in the off season. And let me tell you, one of the biggest things we heard this year was a lot of guys saying what you just said. It's kind of just throwing throwing all those feelings and stress out the window. A lot of guys felt like they really calmed down this year and kind of, you know, if I lose, I lose. If I win, I win. And they kind of just let the let the just kind of let it take its course and see what, you know, see what happens. Cause I feel like a lot of people stress over seeding and where they're at in the tournament. And, Oh, I took a loss. Now I have to wrestle X amount of matches to try to place at nationals. And um, I think this year we had a lot of guys say that they were just a lot more relaxed and a lot more just focused on the future and not focused on wrestling. So yeah, kind of getting caught up and just like caring about what other people think about, or just like caring what other people, like what other people really want, like expect of you. And that was kind of like, like I, I turned off social media pretty much the whole season. Like I was just like mute, 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 and just pretty much muted everything because I know I was gonna see like anytime I opened it up, I was seeing you know, oh rankings here, ranking this, you know, expecting this person, that person, and you know to not see your name mentioned or and something like that. It's just like oh man, they're not even they're not even considering me. Like people don't even believe me. And it's like to just cut all that out and to just not even really really worry about what the heck people are saying or what number you are. Like yeah, I, I tried my best not to look at rankings at all at all this year. Because yeah. every y'all know like numbers like the rankings don't really mean at all at all man they don't they don't um, especially this, this year's tournament there was a lot of upsets round one so. a lot of bracket breakers a lot of people lost and like you said a lot of people lost in the first round so yeah. talk a little bit about your support system man we we just got done filming with three time national champ and and now current Penn assistant wrestling coach Mark Hall and huh. he had some very kind words he he told us that outside of his pen guys, you are one of his favorite people to watch wrestle and he loves the style of wrestling that you do. So uh, shout out to Mark Hall for that. He had some very kind words to say about you. So uh, I, I picked up the Mr. Uh, the Mr. Mi Mixer this past season. And he was one of the guys I watched film on and like really tried to like nail down how it worked because he's always had a really good one. So, I mean, it's, he, he you know, uh, dues to him for, you know, kind of paving the way on that. But, Thank you. I mean, I, I definitely, if whenever, if you ever listen to me say this now, thank you so much, you know, I appreciate it. <laughs> Good, fun wrestling. 
right? So it's, I just try to go out and have fun. You, especially this season was a lot of a lot of fun trying to have. So that was awesome. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. He said that about you, and I was I was excited to to spread the word to you and let him let you That's know cool. that uh, he's a fan of you. He's a fan of you, uh, definitely. So, I mean, a lot of guys have outlets during um during the off you know during either off season or downtime during the season. Yours is a little bit different. A lot of guys you catch kind of just relaxing with the boys or uh, playing some video games, but you're a big artist. Yeah. And um, to anybody who hasn't seen, go check out Kai's Instagram. And if you want to show some of your art that you have on hand, just guy is crazy. Some of the coolest stuff that I've personally seen. And it's not just art. He also tattoos himself. Crazy. I sat, I must've sat in your live for like 45 minutes an hour. The, the other week and just watched you tattoo yourself because I, I thought that was so interesting. And we heard from Trent um, Hydley that you tattooed almost all of your teammates as well. Yeah. Some of them now more than not. So, <laughs> yeah. So to talk a little bit about, about the art and how you kind of picked that up. Yeah. So uh, I guess I, I don't know. He just kind of, uh, my dad was a good artist. He was a, he's a carpenter by trade, but he's always been, a, he was always a really good artist. And I was kind of the first person that I seen or I had contact with being a good artist. And I always just kind of, I picked it up right away and I kind of inherited that quality from him. So I've always, you know, I've always liked, I've always enjoyed being like an artist doing something kind of crafty or really just building anytime I'm using, like working with my hands or just being something artistic in any sense is like that. I've always, I've always really enjoyed that, you know? And I wouldn't say like I took it too serious. Like I take wrestling um, up until like the end, towards the end of my high school career. Cause it was like, okay, now I need to start worrying about like what I actually want to study in college. And at the time it was like, Oh, I'll be an engineer, you know, artists are make good engineers. We're creative, but I'm not really good at math. So I decided to kind of roll that out. And then I just kind of bought into the whole, like, like actual fine art and um, side of things. But it kind of, COVID kind of uh, made kind of worked to my benefit now because it kind of showed people the the benefit of um, expressing your appearance and like trying to make things like aesthetically pleasing now. So being an artist has been cut, has become a, a great, um, a great uh, door opener for me because it's, it's valuable to people and like express and expression in that kind of sense. So, but yeah, I've always been an artist. I can't say like uh, one person taught me how to be an artist because I, it was just a quality that I was, you know, already um, pretty good at. I, it came easy to me, kind of like how wrestling ended up, ended up clicking and coming to me. But art, I, I would actually argue that um, art, being an artist was is easier than being a wrestler just because it has been, well, at least for me, it has been just because a lot of the artistic things that I can, they translate over to a lot of other things and it's easier for me to pick up new like tools to use and stuff like that. So, yeah. So how did, how did, how did the tattooing come into play? When did you kind of realize that you had a, a steady hand and, and a good eye and were able to tattoo people? Uh, actually, it wasn't my idea. Um, uh, guys on the team have always kind of told me, like, before COVID, like, guys on the teams were kind of telling me, like, hey, guy, you should, you should get, like, a tattoo kit, you know, start tattooing and everything. I was like, but I wasn't really, like, too, totally sure about it because I, I hadn't had, I didn't have the same perception of tattooing that I do now. And I didn't really, like, really totally, like, realize, like, how, like, like the capabilities of, like, the – just like the trade and everything. So I was like super iffy about it, but I brought, I went home during COVID for a little bit. And then I like brought it up to my dad and he just jumped at it. He jumped, he went out and he bought me my first kit from some janky, like janky corner, like vape shop that, that sells like little starter kits. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm doing this now. So I brought it back to Raleigh, showed it to the guys that we we were, we were all just kind of hanging out during COVID. And that's when it all started. So we start. I, I think I spent about thirty minutes or so on some fake skin, and then they want, after that, one of them was just like, "All right, get me, get me, a get me right now." I said, "Oh God, all right, here we go." So yeah, that's how big, started. big faith they put in you because you I, know every a lot of people oh, say you know you got to be careful you get tattooed because it lasts forever. Oh, so yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I think it was my. I think it was AJ Kovacs was the very first person I put a line on, and I was I was running the machine way too hot. Machine was running way too hot, and I cut the hell out of him. But <laughs> it put ink in the skin for a little bit, a little bit, a little more blood than ink. I think came out. But <laughs> after awesome, that, man. that I played with the machine. I kind of looked up like where everything, where I looked up where everything, how, how and everything was supposed to be. And then after that, you know, I really started studying it for a while. You know, learning what like just the do's and don'ts, tips and tricks, and everything like that. 
And that whole day, I remember we were just all messing around. I was giving out some pretty bad tattoos. And I think I was about, I was the third person to actually like tattoo myself. And the the hook in the middle of my arm here was that first thing I ever did. And the first version of it wasn't as good as it is now, but it, that was that was the first time I ever, I ever I ever got a first tattoo, and it was like my third time tattooing at all. So that's awesome. You see, like I think stuff like that is so cool. Like that, yeah. Your teammates, it just kind of shows the brotherhood of wrestling. Like, oh, yeah. how how often would you let some random college student that you're hanging out with be like, "I want you to tattoo me and get give me some some permanent ink in my skin that will last the rest of my life." You I'll gotta have a lot of a lot of trust in that person. Oh, you yeah, know. Well, I mean, like they like even before that, though, I had made myself like like they knew I was a good artist, and I and I, I they were pretty familiar with like 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 I guess not fully familiar, but pretty familiar with my capabilities as an artist, and they I I guess most people just, like assume you know kind of tattooing like is just more like draw is a lot like drawing or something like that but it's 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 weird it's kind of like drawing with a jackhammer that's like a mini jackhammer in your hand <laughs> it's 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 a learning curve but it's like once you figure it out it's not super bad but there's there's still like just like a translation that needs to be learned for it to like work out well and everything yeah man. But we're good now we're good now we, we got a good Got a good feel with the machines. You, know? you got a good feel with the machine. Are you still working with that first that first tattoo kit that you got that your dad got you? Oh, no. that that thing's pretty much gone at this point. A lot of the stuff I had in there though, that's funny. This is a funny story that I had. Um, a lot of the stuff that I had, I started I did start building a collection and everything, and I would keep it in this like silver, silver crate that I would, you know, kind of it was like my travel crate because I would go around everywhere and I would kind of just bring all my stuff to people if I if they wanted a tattoo. So I would bring my stuff to them. I still made sure I made everything same to it. Any anytime I went in any, anywhere, it was you know disinfect everything around within pretty pretty much ten square feet was just be like disinfect, disinfect. You know, I ever make sure everything was clean. But uh, this this silver crate that I would carry around it was like my travel crate. And one night when I was about to go home, actually, I was about to make a drive, make a trip back to Missouri, and I put my crate in my car, but I was parked at a parking garage near my uh, at my girlfriend's crib. And the next day I come out and someone stole all of my tattoo stuff oh. out of or the night before I'm about to make a road trip home where I had t- people to get tattooed lined up. So I was That's like, gotta hurt a little bit. Oh, it hurt. It hurt a lot. But uh, luckily at the time, I think I got, I got ended up getting back home and I was just, I started scouring Facebook marketplace cause I didn't really want to tell these people like, Hey, I just got all my stuff stolen and I can't give you it. I can't help you out now. So. But I just I ended up scouring Facebook Marketplace and some lady had some had a little kit put together with a with a with a pretty decent machine. It's a machine I still use now, but uh, she had the she had this kit put together and I was like, hey, uh, I I uh, ended up reaching out to her and bought it off Facebook and then had a pretty much kind of had a had a, a heartbreaking reset, but it was uh, we ended up making it work again, so it worked out. Yeah, man. Got- I think I think you might have the coolest side hustle out of anybody we've spoken to everybody yeah. can play video games and anybody could just hang out with the boys and go out and do whatever with them but i think tattooing your teammates might be one of the coolest coolest yeah. relaxing things that we've heard uh from anybody man yeah time flies when it happens too like i like i sat down like i sat, i think i spent about five to six hours on my arm just don't just alone i was only on live for about two or three but i kind of got i had to go run off i'd lift and then i had dinner uh team dinner but then whenever i got back i think i I was i sat down from about 8 30 or 9 to uh, uh one in the morning trying to finish it up so turned out well yeah man it, i think it's sick it's so so what, what's your major in college are you, you're a, you're an art student right yeah art and design and it, that sounds like i like i'm not like a fine art like I, it's really my major isn't exactly what i thought it would have been because it's not like i go in and i just kind of get to you know paint pictures or draw every day or whatever i've had classes like that where it was a drawing class or in like a color theory class and stuff like that. But uh, I would say like the major is more focused around like problem solving and the solutions are like artistic and creative solutions where I have to like kind of develop something for it. But the problems aren't always, it's, it's a lot of it is like creative solutions sometimes. So it's like, and, and like problem solving. And I, it, it, it's like, sometimes it's like, okay, I just kind of did like a craft thing, but like, and then other times it's like, I had to really like think something out and like kind of make different iterations or something and like develop like a story or something for like a character. Like the last, the last big thing I think I did was like for my fibers and surface design uh, studio is that 
before I even like started working on anything, I had to kind of create a concept of a character that I was going to be designing like my, um, my, like my pretty much my project around, but this character had to have a, f- a fully fleshed out backstory, different iterations of their design, what they would look like and just kind of a fully like complex, like foundation of what the character is from, what he's created and just kind of like how, like how he makes sense. And a lot of those things that went into that was just kind of like development and iteration. And then like, just kind of like a bunch of other like factors, like what influenced him, what, in, you know, like what qualities it was he, you know, what had, had I taken from other things? So it's, it's like a very complex creative process most of the time. Yeah. It's man, not, it's, it's not it, what you do is so cool. I feel like, yeah, like I said, it, I find it super interesting. I'm sure a lot of other people do. Um, so what's the plan after college? Do you plan on sticking with wrestling or do you plan on maybe going ahead and start tattooing? I mean, I think you got a knack for it. Yeah, no, I would, I would love to get into a shop, especially one around here. You know, I mean, it's hard right now because, you know, obviously to get into a shop, you like want you to start as an apprentice sometimes, you know, spending a lot of, t- and that apprenticeships can take a long time. And especially if you want to be like a serious role in a shop, like they do take a while, but. If I was a, like, right now I don't have anything set right now, but if I could, like, find a connection through around here, so, you know, maybe, you know, somebody who does tattoo, owns a shop, and loves wrestling, you know, if they were to allow me to come in, just spend time waiting there when I can, being able to build relationships and get to know some people and then translate to that right out right out of college, I would love that. But I don't have that right now. So anybody um, anybody around NC State, you know, uh, that's got some connections to a tattoo shop and loves NC, NC State athletics, you know, yeah. reach out to Kai, man. He – he would love to get some some shop time in. I'm sure. I would love an intern slash uh, part time apprenticeship if that even is allowed. That'd be sick. I think that'd be that'd be awesome to see. Uh, you do that'd be awesome, man. One day, uh, get some get some get some of the guys from the heavyweight nation company down to North Carolina. We'll get some 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 Kai tattoos. I think that'd be sick. But, but besides, but besides that, I mean. I don't know, cause like once once I finish here and, I'll, and I graduate, I'll have a design degree, so I could get you know I could end up you know working a job somewhere. Mm-hmm. And I've kind of talked with some people who were our alumni from state and do run you know creative creative companies that would allow me to do that. And that is a possibility, but you know I I still have a good amount of time before oh, I have to yeah, make. You're it. really young, yeah. You got a lot of time. Yeah. Like wrestling straight out of college, either. Like I'm not. I don't, I'm not fully confident that I want to, you know, get right into the world circuit, but just because I, I've never had a super huge passion for freestyle wrestling. And I think, you know, <laughs> at that point, I might just, I might just be ready to kind of hang up my, my, my competing, uh, competing career, you know, just kind of start the, start the job world, start the, maybe start, start a family at some point too. Who knows? So. You don't want to be a fighter? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I wanted to be a fire bad when I was growing up. I think that was more just like my dad wanted me to be a fighter too, though. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to fight bad growing up. But I don't know, man. Combat fighting, the combat the much. combat sports world is not kind to you. Yeah, you, getting punched in the face for money is is the scary thing. And yeah. how much I like to get punched in the face. Um, but yeah, you know, growing up, like I I I I fought growing up. I did kickboxing and all that and everything. But I mean, I wasn't like you know, as a kid, it wasn't really that that crazy. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Getting in there with some people who actually want to kill me, and you know, besides it being a wrestling match, and you know, I don't, again, I don't know how much I would like getting punched in the face. So yeah, it it really is. It's like a wrestling match that you could get punched in the face, kicked in the head, and choked out while yeah. still wrestling. I kind of think <laughs> like it sucks, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe some down the, somewhere down the line, I'll be sitting and I'll be doing my doing my thing, and I'll be like. Man, I gotta fight. <laughs> Man, I just I have I've been off the mat too long. I need to get out and I need to try to fight somebody. That'd be so. sick. Be sick, man. You you really sound like you're a jack of all trades type of guy. I want to try a little bit of everything in the world. And I think oh, uh, yeah, I, do I think when you, when you're young, I think it's the time to do it. It's the tr- the time you throw your hat in 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 a lot of different areas, and then you worry about all the other stuff when you're th- when you're in your 30s and 40s. That's when you got to worry about the future. But you know, mm-hmm. you're you're a young guy and. You got lots of time to to throw your hat around in different fields, man. So, just got some some questions for you. Um, I think the, a lot of the fans want to know what's with the celebration, what's with the talk oh. out, man. What's what's the the history behind that? 
Yeah, no, um, I don't know. I've always kind of just stuck my tongue out uh, at a lot of different times. Most of the time, like, like if you go back last year and you watch some matches, I, I was doing this. I was sticking my tongue out in a few of those. Um, not like I am now, though. Um, now it's more of like it's more of like like a lot of people call it like uh, or a lot of people notice that like it looked like a lot like the haka, like like whenever I do it, mm-hmm. kind of like crazy and I get my crazy eye going with it. Like it, it looks like it looks like a haka, and that's kind of what it's turned into now. But that I don't know that 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 started more as coincidence, but I, I've kind of rolled with it just because it is something that you know I can relate to a little bit. My dad's my dad's family is po- is Polynesian Polynesian. They're from the Hawaiian Islands. My dad was born and raised on Maui for a while. And then some for some reason moved back to uh, uh, Imperial Missouri, and that's where I was born. So I don't know why he did that, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's just it's a small part of my heritage. You know, it's from my dad. I'm very white, and I got my mom's complexion. But my my dad, you know, he's pretty much he pretty much looks like he came straight from the island. You know, he still looks like he lives there most of the year, and. <laughs> It was. It's just a small part of my heritage that I like to kind of embrace because it is. It is a warrior culture, and to be in those, to be in those moments and have big wins, you know, it kind of comes out. And you know, it's just, it's a good, it's a good way of me to kind of like express a p- small part of my, small part of my culture, and then uh, the, well, culture that I'm that has kind of made me, and you know, I let the, the fans really enjoy it too. All right? I get a lot of people, <laughs> got a lot of people now who just randomly stick their tongue out on me, and then like people are. People in other states too have kind of picked it up, and then other people across the country have reached out to me and said that you know they loved it a lot. So, I think it's cool. I think it's a, it's a little bit different. It's 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 fun. It's a, it's it's cool to see, man. So, we'll uh kind of hop into some of our Q and A questions that we like to ask all of our guests. Um, are you a guy that does? Do you do some like heavy weight cuts? Or are you are you do you walk around pretty much near one thirty three? Oh, I gotta make a good a good cut most guys it's not like actually like it's not like i'm like cutting a lot of weight but i just seem to lose less weight than everyone else so <laughs> but no it's it's a good cut it's a good cut all right so us here at heavyweight nation we're all some large men that enjoy some good food so what is your go-to post weigh-in meal like you step off the scale what are you doing to refuel to refuel oh man well, uh, I can say that like a lot of the dual food that we had, like a lot of things that a lot of what I would try to have like right after a dual is first thing is just get some get some salt back into me. So I try to pound a lot of sodium, but then foods that I go for like on a one hour dual that I would like I'm looking to I'm looking to get in oatmeal, bananas, honey, some uh, there's some more salty snacks, so like pretzels or anything like that. But I'm there's not. I'm not, I'm not putting in a lot, a whole lot. Cause I only got that one hour, you know, I, I don't want to over, over gorge or anything like that. But besides that, you know, I see, yeah. Bananas, oatmeal, honey. We heard a lot of honey. We heard guys that just will I've, knock yeah, back I've, a couple t- tablespoons of honey and then just drink. And they're more worried about, I, about just getting the few, the getting the liquid in more than the food. Yeah, no, that's me. I do that. Well, honey's just it's a quick digestion carb, so it's gonna give me it's gonna give you quick energy and you know, on like a short time frame. So I pound honey before I go into practice and I sometimes I'll even take a little shot between in the middle of it. So So we've uh, had a we've had a lot of guys lately, uh, especially today, have had a lot of guys talk about about one hour weigh ins. What do you do you think that the NCAA should do away with one hour weigh ins and go to the two hour weigh ins that you have for like tournaments? I- I would like a little bit more time off yeah, of one hour. We had like uh, we had we had Killian Cardinal from one from West Virginia, and he was talking about how the one hour weigh-ins, man. It's like especially when you're cutting to twenty five, like it's like it's not nearly enough time to refuel your body. Yeah, no, I I agree. I would two hours. I feel great on two hours. Um, one hour. Like- yeah. He said he thinks that the wrestling would be so much better across the entire yeah. NCAA if you had two hour weigh-ins. I- or just go in reverse. I don't. I don't know why we don't start with heavyweights. The guys that never have that weight. You know that's that was, a valid point too. <laughs> a valid point too, man. That uh, the big boys be, are stepping on the scale at two sixty five. They're twenty pounds under. They're going oh. to going to practice with shorts and t shirts on and eating a bag of Cheetos on the way home from practice. And I don't know why. I don't know why we've never. No one's ever thought about going in reverse. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. That's a good point. But you know, I. Oh, I, I would agree with Killian. I think that better wrestling is done after two up. Much better, much better. Mm-hmm. Man, that guy. I remember seeing his video of his video of what he has to do to get ready for just to wrestle and how mm-hmm. much he was 
up, man. I felt bad. I felt bad that he was that banged up because I we're all banged up. But any by the time everyone gets to the NCAA tournament, something somebody's got something. But it yeah. seemed like yeah, just there were little... so many guys. So many of the All Americans this year are getting surgery now. Oh yeah, like no, I know, I'm, like yeah. There's a I'm ton spent... of guys that are, are are out and they're not gonna wrestle like the trials or anything because like they're they're all shot. Like we had uh, Trey Munoz on. He has he just had hand surgery and he tore his meniscus, so he's got to go get that done. And then Killian, he he had his meniscus taken out and he goes to get ACL surgery in a couple of weeks. Trent Hilger is going to get his ACL fixed. Braxton Amos is going to get his shoulder fixed. Like all everybody's getting surgery this off season. Yeah. I mean, I I won't lie. I'm sitting I'm sitting here nursing a kind of a, a Liz Frank foot injury right now. So, oh, that's no fun. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to avoid surgery. You know, I've gotten lucky with not needing any freaking ACL, you know, shoulder or anything like that kind of repairs. But yeah, no, I mean, like I said, everyone had something there. Mine was just a little bit of a bum foot, not a little bit. It was kind of it was getting a little getting a little excruciating at some points. But yeah, yeah, man, like that was like Killian told us he fractured both of his big toes this year too. Easy, yeah. I was no. like, man, like. Anybody, anybody could say like he, that they had a rough year. It was him. Like, oh yeah, like, yeah he was the, the bionic was like, man. Holy crap, man! Like got his meniscus taken out and twenty six days later wrestled at NCAA's. That's crazy. And the only reason he was there was because he got lucky and got an at large bid. That, yeah. that like it's just it's just so like it happens like that somehow. Like it's it's crazy. Like the the thing the stars had to align so perfectly for that, and then for him to all American this year. It was pretty, pretty good, man. So yes, definitely, definitely hats off to him for being able to just wrestle like that. Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. So, all right, another one for you. Since you know you're you're a big weight cut guy, what's the go to cheat meal? You don't have to step on the scale for a while. What's like that one meal where you you kind of wait for it at the end of the season? Oh man, probably like a a very well prepared bowl of like ramen. Going to a, going to a nice cause there's quite a few of them now too in Raleigh like going to a nice like ramen bar though and just having like a good good no no worries bar of like tokotsu ramen or, or something like that. Uh, my favorite version though is actually the Hawaiian version Hawaiian Simon. So my dad used to make it. There aren't any places around here that make it in, make it as well or anything. But I have a cookbook if I ever wanted to make it. So that would that would, if I were to sit down and make something probably be that. But then other Hawaiian food, uh, spam busubi. I love spam busubi. Uh, a good steak is never going to lose uh, undefeated. Good steak is always undefeated. So, but yeah, mm, I don't know. That's those aren't cheaty enough though. I don't feel like. I feel like a good steak is still. Oh, there's still protein in that. <laughs> yeah, that was like we had somebody on the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, man, some good grilled chicken thighs and some potatoes and broccoli." I was like, "Oh, like what? Hold on a second. Like I'm waiting for you to say like Five Guys or like Chipotle. Like not even Chipotle because I feel like Chipotle is kind of like you're still eating protein pretty- too much." Too much protein? No, no, it's gotta, it's gotta be terrible for you. Yeah, it's gotta be. Are you a big? Are you a big like sweets guy? We got a ton of people saying that they just crush candy in the off season, like gummy, like gummy candy. That was like a big candy. thing too. I have a bad sweet tooth. Uh, out of season, no, I would say actually it's a little bit less. Um, Is it because you you can't have it in the season, so it's like yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Like I can't have it, so I want it more. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I find I find little ways to cheat though, just like find like zero sugar alternatives and stuff like that. So I think that's the, that's the way in season that I like to kind of satiate that. But honestly, yeah, our season, I would say it definitely goes down, but I don't know. I get, I get kind of uh, fried fruit, fried food crazy. So like, I, I love, I'm always kind of on the hunt for a nice, like uh fried chicken sandwich or something like that. That I would say that's probably my, my, like my bad for you cheat meal. <laughs> That right. that's that's a good one. That's that's a good one, man. So another. This is a little bit more wrestling question here. If you could wrestle I, uh, anybody, you know, any, any you could wrestle anybody from past, present, future. They got to come down to your weight class, or you got to go up to theirs. You could wrestle anyone. Make a, a super match. Who would you want to wrestle? Um, Adam Hall, <laughs> my coach. Adam Hall, my coach back in college. Man, how do you think still- that would go for you? How do you think yeah. that would go for you if Adam Hall was in his prime versus you in your prime? <laughs> That's why, though, man. I mean, man, he was a dog back in the day, and he still is a dog. He'll still come in and put it on some guys in the room. But he loves to say, oh, I'm washed up. And we're like, dude, no, you're not. What do you mean? He's still rocked out. You know, he's still got his freaking eight-pack. He comes around. He's like, I'm washed up. And we're like, no, you're not, Adam. 
stop it. But yeah, I think it'd be fun rest, wrestle him back in his, his college days when he was in his prime. Well, I forgot what he wrestled though. I think he wrestled forty nine or fifty seven. So I'd have to go up or he'd come down. I want him to come down though. You want him sucked out. You want him sucked sucked out to thirty. Out. <laughs> suck to, suck suck him out to thirty three, man. Uh, this is another good one. We've had a lot of success asking. What is your favorite walkout song? Oh, Mortal Kombat theme song. That's a good one. That's a really good. One. I like that one. We've had oh, a lot of really cool answers. Some people, uh, like really, really cool answers. Cause like sometimes when you're watching like the jewels on TV, you don't really get to hear the walkout song. Like you'll yeah. hear like the ending of it or like the beginning of it. So uh-huh. I think that one's cool. Uh, yeah. I still think Jacob Warner from Iowa walks out to Fat Bottom Girls, and I think that one's pretty funny too. That's good. I don't know. I went through a couple different things. I wanted. To, I almost wanted to kind of come out to the one song, uh, Rasputin. Just because it's so like catchy, and I was like, oh, people might like this, but like, I don't know. Mortal Kombat is just me. It fit. It fits me so well. I, it's been like one of my favorite series since I was a little kid. And you know, if any, anybody that knows me, you know, hears that, and they're like, I just walked out to the Mortal Kombat theme song. I'm like, yeah, no, that, that's totally him. Will we so, ever see a Mortal Kombat tattoo on you? Uh, I have one. Oh, do you? Okay. I I have pants right now, so I might not be able to totally show you. Oh wait, no, I have zipper. Oh wait, these pants have a zipper. I'm an idiot. Hold on. Your big ah. more is was that like your game as a child? <laughs> One of them. I've had, I've I'm a, I've been a big gamer since I was a kid. But oh, that's sick. I got Shao Kahn right here. That's sick. Super sick. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming you did that to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, how do you get to like? How do you tattoo your own thigh? Like. It's not that bad, especially on the like most of the like they're like a lot of the spots on me that I've done aren't like super sensitive spots, but the I mean there definitely have been spots that I've covered that were like painful, but like when you're doing it, you're not thinking about like how much it hurts. You're more I'm more focused on like just trying to run like straight and good lines, you know, keep control of the machine and just make sure making sure I'm doing good technical work. It's like technically you're doing it upside down, right? No, not really. Um, everybody says that too, but it's like. It's not like I like drew everything on upside down and now I'm just like totally filling in off the top of my head upside down. Like I, I have, I've have the design that I did already. I have the stencil that I put on. And so for the first part of it, I'm just, I'm literally just following lines. And then after that, it's, it's filling in from the reference and just kind of, plus I kind of already have the Im- image in my head. Yeah. And, I was say you're also an artist. Yeah, so like yeah. also just turn the picture upside down and be able to look be like, okay, yeah, that looks right. All right. Kai favorite wrestling shoe of all time. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna D to school now. So and I, I've always really loved combat speeds. Just combat speeds. I think we have heard more people always, say combat speed three, three or four specifically. Yeah. I don't know if that was but like the I, best. Uh I don't know. I feel I feel like I was like ten times faster when I was wearing uh, hyper sweeps. I don't know. They hyper I just sweeps? fast. So I really like those shoes. Um, but besides that, you know, combats that they're, they're I love I love combats. You can put on a brand new pair and not have to worry about it feeling stiff or anything like that. They're always broken in. But yeah, I think combats have always just been my my go to for the most part. All right. So, yeah, what is your favorite neutral attack? Neutral. Mm. Blast double. Good blast yeah. double. Always good. Especially when you time it right and they didn't even get time to sprawl or anything like that. A nice, a nice, crisp, clean Jordan Burroughs signature blast double. That's awesome, man. That's a good one. Um, this one might cause some some issues in the NC State wrestling room. Who is your favorite practice partner? My favorite practice partner? Mm. Probably Who's Trombley. That? Probably Jared Trom. We always have good days. There, I don't think there's any days where it's like we're always trying to overly kill each other and we always have very good drills. He, we we did our pre match drills every year every day this year and it was just he's it's always going to be a good go we we get you know we both get get in there it's like it's just like business it's just uh it's like business it's just like you know it's just kind of taking care of business every time we've had to go or we picked each other to go for that day it's always you know it's very laid back but you know serious you know we get we have a good drill good technique session and when we wrestle live we wrestle hard and so yeah yeah I would say Trombley Trombley is always a very uh very good good partner to have on a day i would say that for everybody too though <laughs> i was gonna say me and jake Comacho have great great practices because we do like when we wrestle we wrestle really hard and it's always very competitive but we hurt each other too much so 
<laughs> anytime we wrestle or every other time we wrestle, it feels like we like we injure each other on accident somehow. So it's like, ah, oh, man, we we gotta like we can't like wrestle too much, or we're we're just both gonna be you know needing shoulder repairs or something on X. So <laughs> that's a sounds good, man. And then this question we've asked at this point almost 170 times to different guys from the Olympics to MMA world. And we're now going to ask you this question. You could take three of your NC state teammates with you into the zombie apocalypse. Who would they be and why? Okay. I think I've heard this before and I kind of spent some time thinking about it too, actually. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take Trombley again because I, I do think he's the smartest guy on the team. I'm pretty sure he's going to be a doctor. Uh, so he'll have that kind of, you know, just general knowledge of a lot of different little things. Plus, I think some medical expertise. Uh, Alex Faison. Alex Faison is an ROTC guy. He's also, uh, he's pretty, he's pretty well versed in, you know, combat tactics. So I know, I know he's not, you know, he's not going to stray away and then he's going to know kind of how to maneuver. He's going to, he's going to know how to maneuver a dangerous zone. Ah, uh, but the third, the third pick, the third pick is going to be a little bit different because it's like those guys cover cover pretty niche zones and I, I i cover my own little like niche like uh uh situation so mm, that third pick though it can't be anyone too big because they're eating too much food so in and in a, in a, in a popular situation you know you want to cons- i want to conserve as much as i can i'm gonna i'm gonna take care of take care of my crew but i don't want one guy on my crew needing more than everyone else so i think the bigger guys on the team i might have to rule out Hmm, because Faison's already pretty big too. He's not like the big, big guy, but he's pretty big. He's pretty big. But I gotta think. I gotta think who's like. I feel like you need like a hunter, like a like a a gun guy. Faison's a gun guy. He know he knows this thing about, and I know I know my own fare a little bit too. Um, but now I'm just thinking like who would, who is like the most resourceful and well like well rounded? Because oh man, I gotta think. Ah, I don't know. This is a tough one. I got two though. I got I got I got two two out of three here. Two out of three, definitely, man. Three. I want to say, uh, I think I think Faze Faison was on Trent's team as well. Trent was taking Faison too. Yeah, he's just he's he's just ah. Uh, well, his, his dad's been in the military, so he's very he's very familiar with the military and all that. And he, I just know he's from North Carolina. Oh, actually, you know what? That's a good question. Where are we? Where, what's the setting like? Hmm. I'm gonna question. say you're you're in you're in. Philadelphia in the city. You're in like in cold Philly. northeastern, northeastern, oh. north, northeastern of the United States in a big city. <laughs> yeah, mm. ain't in the wild. You ain't in the wilderness. Not you're in a big city, freezing in the winter in January. <laughs> that changes it. Then I'm still, I'm still keeping my guys because I know, I know, like they're besides, like regardless of location, I know they're gonna do, they're gonna do a good job. But if we're in Philly, if we're in the city, and we're, we're in. A Pennsylvania setting, I probably should go with the PA guy then. Yeah, in a January so, setting too. In January, yeah, somebody who can handle the cold. Um, uh, I want to say Trent. He's a big guy. He's kind of going to take a lot of food. I can I can rely on Trent to get the job done. And always, I know he's going to get through going to get through those tough moments. But man, Trent, he's gonna he's gonna give me a lot of food. I <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing, right? You pop him <laughs> in the knee and let the zombies have at him, then you dip. You you're out of there. You oh, you're... No. my squad. This is my this is my group of three. I'm dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this group. You're going long. down with the ship. Yeah, I'm going down with the ship on these guys. So let's. <laughs> I can slot in Trent for now, but I'm sure I'm sure, and I'm I'm gonna have an epiphany later and think like, oh man, this person. <laughs> I'm gonna get a DM from Kai later, and he's gonna be like, yeah. "This is my third guy." <laughs> we can get a DM. I changed my mind. Uh yeah, man. I mean. Oh, oh, that's another good question I should ask you. Have you eaten Trent's hoagie? Have you tried his hoagie at the hoagie shop? At Mitch's tap? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I want to get a, I want to get a signature hot dog called the Kaiwa Weenie somewhere. So I that, need to would... <laughs> that would be a hot seller, I think. I yeah. think that would be pretty cool. I was going to tell you earlier, my actual like genuine actually cheat meal that I have only whenever I'm cheating and not like in season is a, is a nice, good hot dog. You're a big hot dog guy. I can't yeah. get behind that. Yeah. That might be a hot take. Hot take, hot dogs. Seriously, like my favorite hot dog. My act, my actually my favorite hot dog to go get right now is Sam's Club because they're a dollar. <laughs> it's a dollar fifty hot dog combo, but they're ballpark hot dogs. I mean, these are like full, like cool, like the, the 
like full all beef. Some, some part of this conversation um, is getting clipped. Some um, there's gonna be a clip about you talking about this hot dog on FUA Nation, man. Make, make it look so sus, and she's like, "Oh, oh yes, God. yes, yes, we will." <laughs> Don't worry, it's all right. Tr- tr- uh, Trent Hilger said that a hot dog is closer to a taco than a sandwich. I think it's own category. I think it's. I think it can be its own category. Just the but glizzy is its own category. You can take a hoagie and you assemble it like a hot dog, but you're still gonna call that a sandwich. No, that's a hoagie. It, it's a hoagie. It's a it's its own hoagie. thing. And a hot dog's a hoagie, I guess. I guess. I guess so. I mean, I get. I get. There you go, man. I don't know if Trent would be too happy about that. There's there's a lot of people in the world that aren't big hot dog people. Oh, I mean, I love hot dogs. I don't. I don't know how you couldn't like, especially if like you if you go to like a stadium somewhere and they got hot dogs and they're just ah oh, man. I'm, <laughs> I don't want a hot dog. I'm trying to eat less of them though, because I freaking. <laughs> I went a week. I went a little crazy one week, and I had too many hot dogs. Now, is my scale was starting to crack. So, <laughs> all right, man. I got <laughs> the Kai's a big hot dog guy. He is a fan of the fan of the tube to meat. But uh, Kai, thank you for coming on the show, man. We do appreciate you giving us your time, man. It was awesome to get to get to talk to you and let the fans get to know you a little bit, man. It's been a pleasure. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been another episode of the Heavyweight Nation podcast. We'll see you guys later.